The great uh, Mexican na uh, uh, poet Octavio Paz uh, made this point in, I think it was 1990, when he won the Nobel Prize and he was giving the prize lecture. He says, a veces nuestras literaturas han sido la negación de las literaturas de Europa, más a menudo han sido una respuesta. At times, our literatures have been the negation of the literatures of Europe, um, but m most often they have been a reply. It's the point that I was sort of making earlier that these literatures are in uh, a dialogue, a profound dialogue with each uh, other, uh, and it's illegitimate to make a final separation. Uh, I go f then from here to consider this, one of the central questions that I raised earlier, that question of realism, that question of the self-sufficient subject that stands before the world as complete, organized, uh, and appropriating uh, from nature and reality, and one in which then the reading uh, subject or, or the viewing subject or the listening subject can uh, attach an alliance. That is, they are, we are like them whom we see in the image uh, before us. In this case, we're looking at Hans Holbein's uh, painting, The Ambassadors. Uh, Hans Holbein was a painter for uh, Henry VIII, uh, and this painting was done in 1533. This is at the point when Henry is seeking out uh, what ways he can get out of the kind of uh, uh, commitments around uh, marriage and the church in uh, the in the the great Catholic age in which England is enfolded uh, and um, is precisely at this point that Holbein does this painting uh, of what appears to be two visitors to the king on the left hand side uh, is an ambassador uh, and on the right is uh, a bishop uh, what we see of these two, uh, and uh, the reports are that these two men were there in part to check up on, on Henry uh, on behalf of the papacy. But uh, what is important for us in this conversation is the self-secure way in which they look uh, uh, to us. They look out of the frame. Uh, to the world and how they are surrounded by the objects uh, of this age, what will be the age of discovery and uh, colonization and so forth. There's a globe, there's a sexton, uh, there's a lute, etc. These objects help to ground them as uh, important subjects, subjects that seem wealthy, subjects that seem secure, subjects that speak to us from an organized, a self-organizing space looking out uh, to the world. Uh, and I want to contrast that with the um, painting of a post-colonial artist, uh, Gordon Bennett, uh, from Australia, Aboriginal artist, and you see immediately uh, uh, the um, element of critique, the element of dialogue. dialogue. The, uh, for one thing, what would be a single mannerous image turns out to be three. This is a painting that you could see as a triptych, uh, that uh, it's divided in three different spheres. The top sphere quotes Van Gogh's Starry Night, and the bottom sphere quotes his Vincent bedroom at Arles. And in the middle is this 
figure uh, whose head is uh, lopped off, and he's leaning towards two classical Greek heads. The suggestion that for his full reintegration, uh, he becomes this uh, hybrid subject. Uh, and this is, of course, uh, presented to us with a suggestion of historical violence, disturbance. It is not an easy settlement. It is not a multicultural solution of uh, adding on things together, but is presenting us with uh, a model of uh, contestation, challenge, contradictions, dialogue, over which an intense conversation is being uh, uh, presented to us. Uh, another figure of this type, again, with a very strong focus on the question of subjectivity. What is, what is the post-colonial self set against this history, set against a way of training artists. I suspect all these artists had the same training, conservatives training about line, about color, about the construction of image, about the use of paint and color, etc. And they're rebelling against it. And, and they're also introducing particular kinds of uh, radical subject matter. And here, this image, uh, we have uh, uh, in this painting called Poor Devil, of a, an African head uh, projected out of the head of a European <laughs> uh, with horns and so forth, but yet you have the blue eyes. And, uh, and this particular negotiation that uh, uh, is going on in the Caribbean and in Latin America about the status of the Africanness of the area. It, where we have lived years and years and years of disavowal. <laughs> and uh, uh, Arnoldo, uh, Arnaldo uh, Rabel wants to present us with a different birthing of Venus. This is not Botticelli. Uh, this is a different subject that comes out of um, the um, turbulence of the colonial experience, in some ways, waiting to be born is incoherent. Uh, has this? There's a sense of of uh, the use of yellows and oranges and so forth that suggests a constant purgatorial fire that is burning in the subject. And when you think of Botticelli and Venus, and you think of this different type of birthing, where. Uh, something uh, rises out of almost the historical, if you will, jungles of uh, the region, uh, unformed, um, uh, complexly articulated, uh, full of internal angst and uncertainty. Uh, that's uh, Ravel's contribution. It's a statement about individual uh, and sort of a, a constant sense of self-dissolution, uh, but it's a statement about the society at large that has not settled uh, these issues ab about uh, the relationships between the different ethnic histories and so forth. So again, uh, what we're seeing in the art is not a functionlessness of art, but a particular critical function where art is committed to a kind of radical dialogue about identity, uh, about authenticity, about cultural belonging, and the like.